Now we are going to do trigonometric integrals. So when I say trigonometric integrals, I mean integrals that have trig functions, mainly and only trig functions inside, possibly some combination of trig functions. Now, I can't possibly give you a tool that works for every single case, so I'm going to give you several examples of different kinds of situations where we can be creative, we can be problem solvers, we can think critically and come up with ways to turn it into something that we can integrate. Most of these involve some kind of substitution um, that works to make everything simplified. So, let's get started, and as you see, most of this is just a whole bunch of examples. So, I'm going to start by introducing to us a strategy for sines times cosines. I can't type apparently when I write Okay, so here's kind of the foundational step for this first batch of types of problems. Essentially, what I'm looking for is when I've got sines times cosines, or maybe no sines and just cosines to power, or no cosines but sines to a power, if I've got an odd number of either one of those, I can do this trick. I can split one of those off to the side. So that's obviously true. I mean, cosine cubed is cosine squared times cosine of x. What I'm essentially doing is I'm going to use some trig identities and a substitution to do the rest of this work. Do you remember the most used trigonometric identity from your trig class, your pre-cal class? The one that said something about these guys. Right? That's a very important trig identity, and we actually use them quite a bit. But that also tells me, so you can put off to the side here, recall that cosine squared of x is 1 minus sine squared of x. Or sine squared of x is 1 minus cosine squared of x. Now think through this with me for a second of why these two facts, the splitting off of one cosine and replacing cosine squared with sine squareds would be useful. Okay? If I did this and replaced him with what he's equal to. What is cosine squared the same thing as? And I leave this cosine of x dx here. Now I have all the makings of a perfect substitution problem. <coughs> Namely, let u be sine of x. And now what is du? Just cosine of x, dx, right? Which means I've got the got the whole du and this right here just becomes u squared. That's why this key point of me saying if I have an odd number of something, life is good. Because I could pull one off and be left with an even number. If I have an even number, then I can use what's up here in this thought bubble to replace it with the other trig function. Now, if I use a substitution of that other trig function, then the du is going to have the one that I stripped off on it. And now the integral is actually fairly simple to do. It is the integral of 1 minus u squared du. Right? You agree with that? Again, where I got this idea, I, I didn't come up with it. I've seen somebody else do this dozens of times, and I've now done it a, a 
few times, having been through this class and a PhD program in math. I've done it a few times. It's just a strategy now I have in my toolbox. If I have sines and mu cosines multiplied together and there's an odd number of one of them, I can split that off, turn it into an even number, and then I will just have, I'll, have the, I'll be able to write all of the rest of that in terms of the other trig function, and now my, sub, my substitution will work. So this becomes, what's the integral of 1 minus u squared? Integral of 1 is u. Yep. Plus c. And now you just substitute back in. You get sine of x minus 1 third sine cubed of x plus c. Notice how that's really not what you would expect from cosine cubed. But you can't just do things like raise that to one power and then divide by it like you can with just x's because of the chain rule. The chain rule always messes things up when you try to go backwards. So in this case, the only thing we could do is, is come up with a new strategy, and that's what we've done here. Okay, so again, if there's an odd number of them, split one off, write the rest of the integrand in terms of the other trig function, and then use... Substitution. Let's see if we can't do that same step here. You help me walk through this. Which one would you split off? So I would write this as the integral of what? Sine to the fourth of x. Right. I'm going to put cosine squared x, and then I'm going to put the sine of x dx here at the end. They're all still just multiplied together, so I can rearrange things in order, doesn't matter what order. So what I want is I want this to be my du, right? So I know, I know I'm going to want to do my u as a cosine. So I've already got this as a cosine, so I don't have to worry about this part. Now I've got to convert this to cosines. So my trick is, because I pulled off one, I'm left with an even number, that's helpful because I can write that now as sine squared of x squared. Cosine squared of x, sine of x, dx. Because if there was an odd number, I pull one off, I'm left with an even number, which means I can always write it as sine squared to some power. Right? If I had sine to the sixth, I would write it as sine squared cubed. If I had sine to the eighth, I'd write it as sine squared to the fourth. Right? Because I have a formula to turn sine squareds into cosine squareds. This now looks like the integral of 1 minus cosine squared of x, quantity squared, cosine squared of x, sine of x, dx. Yeah, so if you've got sines times cosines and they're to powers, if you've got one of them odd, you can always split this off and turn the rest into the other trig function. Where did you get the one of? Um, it's from this bubble up here, right? Sine squared oh, okay, okay. comes from the Pythagorean trigonometric identity. Now go ahead and do the substitution. I will let u be what? Just cosine. And by do cosine squared, I got to worry about bringing the two out front and the sine shows up. I just want cosine of x. Du becomes negative. So I'm going to have to stick a minus in here and pull a minus out front. Because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, right. so I need a negative sine of x dx for my du. So I put that minus in here, but to, so I don't change the whole integral, I just multiply by minus out front. Same thing I did with the 2 uh -huh. um, way back on the previous uh, notes. Right, when you do substitution, you can multiply in constants. 
long as you divide them outside. Negative is nice because multiplying in and dividing out is the same as just multiplying in and multiplying out. Okay. So I've got negative integral of what? Quantity squared times another u squared and a du. Now the good news, all we got to do now is algebra to get this into a nice expanded polynomial that we can integrate each term, right? Um, for example, 1 minus u squared squared is 1 minus u squared times 1 minus u squared. So FOIL. Or as my algebra professor told me, monkey face. That was my high school algebra teacher. Did you ever get this called monkey face? Kind of looks like a monkey face. Right? My big ears here. Now, when I teach this in algebra, I always make a big deal about them not making fun of me whenever I use monkey face as a verb. I'm going to monkey face this thing. 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. So I have negative integral of 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth times u squared du. And then distribute this in to each of these terms. So I have negative integral of u squared minus 2u to the 4th plus u to the 6th du. Got some negative out front. Let's take the integral. So I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to multiply in the minus sign, and I'm going to replace the u's. One-third cosine cubed of x minus two-fifths cosine to the fifth of x. Oh, that's a plus now, sorry. And there's a minus. And then minus one-seventh cosine seventh of x plus c. Now, uh, moving on to the next one, we have a problem. <coughs> Before I, I, I should pause. Do you have any questions about the one we just did? When you start looking at the top of the next page, the sine squared of x, the problem is we don't have one to strip off and leave behind an even number. we leave behind an odd number if you strip one off. Okay. If we, for example, that sine squared of x, if you just replace that with 1 minus cosine squared of x, yeah. you still have the problem of the square so that if you did a substitution, you don't have the other trig function available to show up in the du. So that doesn't work. Um, and you can just integrate a square of a trig function or e any even power of a trig function because the chain rule messes things up, right? If you tried to raise it to a higher power and divide by that, if you check that going backwards, if you took the derivative of what you thought it would be to see if it's the integrand, you always have the chain rule messing things up. You understand what I'm saying when I, do, when I say that? Let me... Uh... So on this one, there are a couple of trig identities that make life nice when you have even 
powers. Okay, in particular, since there's not one to strip off, use these two trig identities right here. There's a sine squared of x and a cosine squared of x identity that shows up when you're doing double angles. There's a double angle formula. It's one half times one minus cosine of two x. And this one is one half one plus cosine of two x. Now you may or may not remember those in this particular form, but they are very, very true. I'm not going to take last time to prove them, unless you doubt me. Okay. We don't need to prove it. Yeah, I'm fixing to say, don't tell me that you trust me, because <laughs> I'll start the proof right away if you tell me that you trust me. If you say I've seen it before, that's, that's a much better answer. I've seen the proof. I know the proof. I was convinced by the proof in my past. You've seen the proof, I accept the proof. Okay. Don't believe me. Believe that you've seen the proof, and you trust the proof that you saw. Then I'm going to just use that. The nice thing about this is this kind of thing right here is easy to integrate. Right? While cosine squareds give me problems, cosine of 2x's actually don't. And I'll show you with a, a substitution real quick in one minute or less. 0 to pi. Replace this with 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x dx. Just using the identity. A direct replacement of a trig's identity. Okay? I'm going to pull the 1 half outside. So I have 1 half integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus cosine of 2x dx. All right, so let's leave that 1 half out there. Now let's do the integral of this piece. What's the integral of 1? Okay, what's the integral of cosine of 2x? So derivative of cosine is... Sorry, the derivative of sine is just cosine, so the integral of cosine is just sine. So the minus stays there. If I just did sine of 2x as the integral of cosine of 2x, I'm basically I'm going to do a substitution in my head if that's okay with you. Just check and see. Is the derivative of sine of 2x cosine of 2x? You've got a 2 that's the problem, right? Because the derivative of what's inside is 2. So I'm just going to cheat and put the 1 half there. I've now figured out, just in my head, what's that function whose derivative is just cosine of 2x. It's sine of 2x times a half, because if I take the derivative of this, right, the 1 half stays there, derivative of sine is cosine, so you have cosine of 2x times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2, which will cancel with the 1 half. If you want to go the long way, you'd say, let u be 2x, right, and then du is 2 dx, so you have to stick in a 2, and you have to divide out the 1 half. But I, d I don't want to write all that out. So I'm just going to leave it like this. The point is, it's easy to integrate cosine of 2x, or cosine of any uh, multiple of x. It's hard to do sine squareds and cosine squareds of x. And that's now from 0 to pi. So I get 1 half pi minus one-half sine of two pi minus zero minus one-half sine of two times zero. And I'm out of time, so we'll just do this quick. Sine of two pi is zero. Zero is zero. Sine of zero is zero. So I'm left with pi over two. And that's all I have time for, so we'll come back and talk about this at the beginning of Monday just to refresh our memories, and then talk about how we handle sine to the fourth in a very similar way. Okay, so integration by parts homework is due on Monday. We will see you then.